Hi everyone, welcome back and welcome to our discussion related to what caused the tornadoes. There are a number of questions flying around about what might have caused these tornadoes and we are going to address some of the questions that have been posed not only by media but some people outside of the United States. And so you have a number of theories about what caused these tornadoes uh, from global warming to spiritual forces to uh, entities that are outside of this uh, physical dimension. And sometimes the answer is much more simple than it is complicated. And uh, you also hear people mention that uh, sometimes we are dealing with uh, spiritual wickedness and high places and in doing that there is sometimes a forgetting that uh, much of the spiritual wickedness is actually perpetrated by individuals who are in very low places and so we are just going to quickly address some of these questions about these tornadoes and then offer some uh, possibilities that might be again more simple than complex let's get started For those who are outside of the United States, we're just going to have a little geography lesson here so that you can get a handle on where these tornadoes or where this tornado uh, traveled in the United States. The area is known as the heartland. In other words, the heart, the core of the United States. It's also known as the Bible Belt. Uh, you have it also identified as sort of the southern region of the United States. So you have sort of a south central area of the United States. This is an area where there is significant farmland. So this is farm country. This is generally speaking a highly rural area. Uh, these areas are not densely populated. Uh, they are very southern and there is a historical relationship with agriculture. And so if you were outside of America and you were trying to figure out where the heartland states are, this is a list of states typically considered the heartland states. And one important thing to keep in mind is in the heartland is the uh, Cahokia area. So you have the Cahokia Mounds uh, right there, Monk's Mound, right in the center of this area known as the heartland. Now there has been a question about uh, this issue of sustainability in the heartland and all sorts of questions about global warming associated with the heartland. And so there are many questions about the heartland and lots of concern about the heartland simply because of where it is situated and also the geography of the heartland. You also have some issues uh, related to the values of the people in the heartland and so they have values in the heartland that might vary substantially uh, from the values that are considered uh, the coastal areas. We're going to start off at looking at this first question which is tornadoes and global warming is there a connection this is from the National Geographic. One thing to keep in mind is when people are doing research there is often a personal investment in the research People come up with the research question that is interesting to them or that is being funded. And you have people looking for an answer. And you often have people looking to find what they already believe. And so you will see this repeated focus on global warming and climate with respect to just about anything, particularly when you have a focus that is external to the researchers that are sort of driving uh, this question, this line of questioning. And so you will have all of these attempts to center this climate idea and have everything else revolve around it. And so there is a mission going on right now where a number of individuals, entities, uh, want to see the earth as cool as it can possibly be and there is a demand for lower carbon. There are lots of implications to that. We're not going to get into that right now. Um, and so there is a demand for less carbon, uh, perhaps less green, and more cool or more cold, less solar. Um, and so you have a number of dynamics going on here. 
And so there will be constant conversations about whether everything is related to the climate. And of course, everything is related to the climate. Everything is related. And so therefore, everything will ultimately be related to the climate as everything is connected. But what you will also see is this confirmation bias dynamic where researchers, media makers, leaders will start looking for whatever it is that they already believe and looking for things to confirm whatever it is that they believe versus actually looking for the truth. And so we are going to look at some answers uh, to this question. Uh, and again, the answer may be more simple than complicated. Now, coming out of Africa, there is a discussion about what took place with the tornadoes. And this is on a channel for Dr. Soraki. And so there are a number of questions that Dr. Soraki brought up in this discussion related to the tornadoes. And we are going to attempt to address very succinctly uh, these questions and then very succinctly offer uh, some other possibilities. So in this discussion, Dr. Soraki asked about the question of spiritual rescue. And a number of individuals are talking about this dynamic of spiritual rescue. You hear the idea of spiritual rescue running through a number of spiritual and religious themes. And so that is a question that is being asked. Was the tornado dynamic a manifestation of this idea of spiritual rescue? Was there some sort of uh, spiritual intercession going on? Is there some sort of process of spiritual intercession going on? Dr. Soraki goes on to point out that 30 tornadoes do not just come out of nowhere. And the uh, challenge has been offered to think outside of the box with respect to this uh, odd tornado dynamic. Dr. Soraki goes on to talk about the uh, spiritual warfare dynamic and the possibility that there is a, an integration of the heavenlies uh, with the earth at this time. And there is also the offering by Dr. Soraki that uh, this whole dynamic related to the tornadoes might be a manifestation of uh, entities outside of the dimension of the earth uh, interfering with or interacting with dynamics on the earth. And this is very similar to uh, the spiritual paradigm. There's also a question that's tied to the spiritual paradigm and the uh, extra dimensional dynamic. And there is also a suggestion in the discussion that these extra dimensional entities are actually related to humanity and perhaps, uh, according to this narrative, uh, helping the people on the earth uh, that are related to these entities, again, with this, this rescuing paradigm. And then you have the cute little green entity off to the right-hand side there. And then there is the offering that these extra-dimensional entities uh, might be similar to physically uh, those who are already on the earth. And then again, all of this tying to this idea of uh, what brought about these tornadoes. Now, as indicated, sometimes the answer is more simple than complex. This is not to say that the complex questions that are offered by Dr. Soraki and the complex question offered by the National Geographic and other entities, this is not to say that those complex possibilities are not uh, what is going on. Uh, what is offered here is that perhaps the answer is a bit more simple. So for those of you who are outside of America, uh, you may not be familiar with our patent and trademark system. And so there is a process that we have here for filing patents and trademarks, and you can actually research them. Uh, one of the possibilities 
is that uh, sometimes you have people who are involved in things that they have no business being involved in and weather modification is one of those things. You have a number of entities that you know, enjoy science, enjoy creating things, and then you have some individuals who are very obsessed with controlling things. And controlling the weather is something that human beings have been trying to do for forever, from rain dances uh, to some of these things that you see. So one of the things you might want to consider is looking at, uh, this is just a, a pulling of seven patents related to weather modification. In order to file a patent, usually the individual or individuals have been testing out their theories and their little projects. And uh, you may not always be aware that they are testing out their theories and their little projects, um, but you have a significant number of uh, patents, uh, research uh, related to modifying, controlling the weather monitoring the weather. You have so many things from the hurricane hunters. You have so many things related to weather uh, in terms of inventions that you'd be you know, busy all day looking at all of them. We're, we're just going to look at a few of them to give you some food for thought about some alternatives to the extra dimensional theory, uh, to the global warming theory, to the spiritual theory. Uh, these are just some practical possibilities. Again, some very simple possibilities uh, that may not be as complicated uh, as many people might think. Again, there's the offering often that uh, the issue is about spiritual wickedness in high places. And sometimes, again, uh, you have spiritual wickedness, wicked little people in very low places doing things they have no business doing. And this is a patent, 2021 patent, and this is about aerial electrostatic systems for weather modification. And when you look down, you can see the inventor of the patent. This is just the abstract. You can see the inventor of a patent. You can see who applied for the patent. You can see who the assignee is for the patent, who's been assigned uh, this actual patent. And so again, you have real life people who are uh, involved in the research related to this. And what this means is, is that real life people have carried out research related to weather modification and then filed a patent so that they can you know, claim ownership of this idea. And this is another one. This is Intelligent Systems for Weather Modification Programs. Again, this is a 2021 patent. These are US patents, by the way. You also have international patents. And although I'm not familiar with the patent system in every country, there is probably some sort of patent system in every country. And here you have another one. This is 2020, and this is Methods and Means for Storing Heat in the sea for local weather modification. And this is a pretty old patent. This is from 1999, and this is weather modification by artificial satellites. Going back again into 1996, you have methods and means for weather modification. And here you have the same researchers involved in this uh, weather modification research, and this is 1984. And this is method of and means for weather modification. And clearly you can see that this research has been going on for quite a while. You see all the way back in 1979, again, this is a US patent. Uh, and this one is weather modification automatic cartridge dispenser. This is coming from a non-US researcher, but you can always file your patents in the United States so they can be protected. And this one is the specifically method of interrupting a tornado. And so clearly there may be some very simple answers uh, with respect to what took place with these tornadoes. The tornadoes were very unusual uh, in terms of the size, the duration, the distance, the impact. Uh, so you have a very unusual dynamic going on here all the way around uh, with these uh, tornadoes. And again, uh, when you have people doing research 
they have to be doing the research at some point in time. Uh, and it may not always be clear to others that the research is uh, going on. And if devastation occurs, uh, the likelihood that people are going to step up and say that they were involved uh, because they were engaged in some sort of research is pretty much slim to none. Now, we are going to address the uh, issue that is related, and it is about uh, the manifestation uh, by some individuals, and we'll see examples of that, of people becoming very gleeful about what they believe is the potential suffering that has grown out of the tornadoes. And so uh, this gleefulness is generally related to a spiritual dynamic. And this has been noted in a number of instances where people are very gleeful and uh, very much anticipating the destruction and the harm of others and uh, invoking their own version of spirituality or their religion in relation to uh, this harm that they are hoping for for others. And so you have seen this in these discussions related to what has taken place with these tornadoes. And we're going to look at some of these comments and then I'm going to make an observation about some of these dynamics. And so again, people are in some instances getting what's known as merry like Christmas as they are processing what has taken place in Kentucky. And so we've talked about this again uh, previously uh, related to narcissism and this joy in relation to the pain of others, uh, getting pleasure from someone else's pain. And so let's just look at some of these comments so that when you see them, you recognize that this is what is really going on. And sometimes people use victimhood in order to justify their belief in or desire for the suffering of others. And so you have one individual indicating that they were sad because there were too few tornadoes according to them. Uh, they would have liked to have seen 230 of these tornadoes. Uh, then you have another individual, and this theory is very common, related to hurricanes and the uh, slave trade route. And this belief that the hurricanes are coming off the coast of Africa and uh, slamming into the Caribbean and into the uh, southeastern corridor of the United States as some sort of retribution, uh, never seeming to take into consideration the fact that the people who are in the Caribbean and the people who are in the southeastern portion of the United States for the most part were victims of the transatlantic slave trade or they were victims of abuse uh, as American Indians, as indigenous people. And so it's a very interesting theory that people have about these uh, winds coming off the west coast of Africa and slamming into the Americas and uh, them seeing this as some sort of retribution when the harm that is usually incurred is by those who were victimized by the slave trade in the first place. And so perhaps uh, this is a throwback uh, to that, and so perhaps there is joy in this. Uh, if there was joy in the slave trade, uh, descendants of those individuals may find joy in the descendants of those enslaved suffering all the more. You also have an individual who indicates the Most High is doing his work. They haven't seen anything yet. Uh, again, indicating that these individuals who, again, largely, if you look at those areas, you start looking at Mississippi and Kentucky and Arkansas and all of that, um, those individuals were the ones who were adversely impacted by what took place with the indigenous people and what took place in terms of the transatlantic slave trade. So it's unclear exactly uh, what work this most high that this individual uh, is talking about what work is being done and what is it that these uh, individuals who've been victimized over and over again, what work is it that they should be anticipating in the future? 
And here you have another individual uh, identifying that there were 45 tornadoes over nine states and they are glorying uh, in the uh, wind strength and offering that the Most High is at war with the people who are in the heartland, the people who are in the southern uh, portion of the United States with those who would be considered the descendants of chattel slavery. Um, you also have an individual who's offering that uh, this is about their worshiping of the forces of nature and that uh, this is somehow some sort of payback uh, related to the transatlantic slave trade. And somehow the descendants of the transatlantic slave trade suffering more is somehow a payback uh, to those who uh, caused this situation in the first place. Now, if that were the case, the American Indians, the indigenous people of the Americas, as far as we know, were not over in Europe orchestrating the transatlantic slave trade. They were not over in Africa orchestrating the transatlantic slave trade. They were not in Arabia and Asia orchestrating the transatlantic or the trans-Saharan slave trade. And so it's very difficult to understand uh, why this worshiping the forces of nature uh, would be bringing about this cleaning up of this dynamic related to the transatlantic slave trade when the individuals suffering the most are those in rural areas uh, in the southern portion of the United States. And then up top you have an individual indicating that the tornadoes uh, somehow impacted uh, those who were in the space where evil uh, happened to be. And then you have another individual who is offering at the bottom that uh, this is related to Africa calling its children home before nature destroys the West. Uh, this is always interesting because what is suggested in many of these theories is that Africa, Europe, Asia, uh, these places are the spaces of purity and light. And the fact of the matter is, is that you have good and bad in all people. In other words, you have positive and negative in all people. You have what are considered evil and righteous in all people. Uh, no one has a monopoly on either. And there's often a paradigm of putting Africa up on a pedestal and presenting it as the uh, righteousness of the world, the birthplace of the melanated people, uh, the place where all goodness comes from. And I'm going to offer to you that uh, those of you who are in that fantasy world, uh, it is a fantasy. It's unclear where this fantasy is coming from, um, but it is a fantasy. The people in Africa are the people who are in Asia. They are the people who are in the Americas. They are the people in Europe. Uh, they are the same people that are everywhere else. And so there's nothing uh, that sets Africa apart in terms of being righteous. Uh, if Africa was so righteous, there would be no diaspora, if you understand what I'm saying. If Europe was so righteous, there would be no diaspora. If there was not collusion between Europe, Africa, and Asia, and they are all one, basically. If there was no collusion, there would have been no transatlantic slave trade going on in the first place. And so all of these fantasies related to uh, sort of demonizing those who are in the United States and then uh, putting everyone else up on a pedestal. Um, this is a very odd dynamic and people are encouraged to really think about where that is coming from. You even have individuals identifying America as Babylon. That's fine. Uh, however, the Babylonians are in Nigeria. The ancient Babylonians are in Nigeria. And so Babylon doesn't change simply because you change the name of the people or you move the people around. Uh, ancient Babylon, the ancient Babylonians are right there on the west coast of Africa. 
they are also in parts of the United States. And so there is no dearth of Babylon in a variety of places. But simply referring to America as Babylon in order to obscure the fact that the ancient Babylonians are largely on the west coast of Africa uh, is problematic. And it's not in keeping with uh, perhaps with reality. But we're going to move on here. As we wrap this up, we've looked at some of the theories about what might have caused the tornadoes. And then we looked at a potential very simple uh, answer for what might bring about these types of events. And sometimes you have man-made things that bring about these events versus something that is outside of uh, human activity. That's not to say that there is not a spiritual component to it or that there is not an extra dimensional component to it. It's just to point out that sometimes human beings are simply doing things they have no business doing that have adverse impacts on human beings. We've also talked about very briefly this dynamic of people glorying in the suffering of others. Let me give you something to think about here. That is a very narcissistic dynamic, by the way. It's a very infantile narcissistic dynamic where individuals fantasize about the destruction or the suffering of other people based upon their belief in being victimized by these individuals. Now, it's not always clear, uh, you know, what's going on in some of these situations. It's not always clear who the victim is and who the victimizer is, uh, because you can very well right now have Nigeria and Benin claiming victimization based upon colonization while forgetting the role that they played in enslaving uh, large groups of people, millions of people. And so it's very easy to play that victim role even in the Americas, when people forget about the victimizer role that some of their ancestors played and the benefit that they might be reaping uh, from the suffering of other people. And so we're going to go a little deeper here by looking at this dynamic of uh, people giving out whatever is inside of them some people are wishing for the destruction of others because what they have inside of them is a destructive urge. They have destruction inside of them. People only have to give out whatever it is they have inside of them. And so if people are giving other people a hard time, it's because they have a hard time inside of them. If people are completely unforgiving towards other people, it's because they have unforgiveness inside of them. If there is sadness or pain or anything like that that they are giving off, it's because that is what is inside of them. And what you have is the creation, the co-creation of an external world based upon what is inside of all of the people. There's a lot of suffering going on on the earth right now. You have a number of people who are involved in a number of pathological dynamics. Why? Because they have pathology inside of them and that is what they have to offer. They are not offering love. They are not offering compassion. They are not offering honesty. They are not offering anything positive because they don't have a lot of positivity going on. And so what they are offering is what they have. You have individuals who are complaining about what is going on. But many of those same individuals have the same mindset as the oppressor. The entity that they identify as the oppressor, they have the same mindset. They believe in the same destruction. They believe in the same hurt and harm. They believe in these hierarchies. They believe in power imbalances. The only problem they have with anything that is going on is that they are not the ones in power. They are not the ones doing the destructive things. They are not the ones lording it over everyone else. They are not upset about the dynamics. They are simply upset because they are not the catalyst for the crazy. And so when you hear individuals going on and on and on about other people being destroyed, 
about how they want to be in control, you will often hear some of them say, we got next. When you hear that type of sentiment, you know that you are dealing with some level of pathology. When someone says we got next, they are not generally talking about bringing happiness to the earth. They are talking about bringing about the destruction that they believe they have suffered. These are not individuals that are going to be happy individuals to be around. These are not individuals that you're going to want to form a community with. These are individuals who are basically talking about, fantasizing about, planning about being the destruction that they believe they are suffering. These individuals will find passages in their holy books. They will find sentiment that they believe they got from their ancestors in order to justify this deep desire to do and be the very thing that they claim they have disdain for. And so when you hear this, you need to really step back and think about the extent to which this thinking, this mindset, this spirit is one that is going to be beneficial to the earth or one that is going to be a detriment to the earth. And if you are one of these individuals you know, talking about this type of dynamic, fantasizing about this type of dynamic, it's something that you might want to step back and really think about. What is it that you are articulating? What are you hoping for? What is inside of you that the most important thing that you can think about is you got next? And here's something else to think about. Whatever it is you are seeking, you will usually find. And that includes destruction. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.